using Adobe Spark, which is the tool that we use uh, primarily for this workshop. So let me share my screen and see if uh, I can share it on the screen I'm talking to to make it look a little more natural. Uh, let's see, here we go. Okay, do you guys see that screen? Yes. Okay, add it here. Is that uh, in view? Yeah, so far. Okay, so I'm going to use presentation mode here and see what happens. Oh, I don't see it, John. Is There's it coming a, back? I just see a line. Yeah, there are just two bars. Two bars. Yeah. Okay. So much for that experiment. I'm going to stop that then. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> We're going to try this again. Uh, looks like I can't do that. Too fancy. So I'm going to go back to uh, plan A, which is just putting it on my other browser screen here and try and present from here. Yeah, maybe it's the order I do it in. So there's that. I'll just try and share it, share it again here. We'll pick this screen here. Okay. How's that? Are we seeing something? Yep. Okay. Yes. We should say it will be digital portfolio project. So this presentation is going to be about uh, an applied research project that uh, Pat and I led uh, from about, uh, well, last December, really, uh, towards uh, to the end of August. And we had a team of uh, about uh, seven students in total working on this with us. And uh, uh, we created these digital portfolio workshops. So I'm going to just uh, advance through if I can. <laughs> There we go. So there's me. Uh, as like most of you guys know, I'm a uh, project director in applied research. Uh, and we develop collaborative research projects with industry partners, students, and professors. Uh, I have to say, I've got a great job. You know, I, I work with uh, really great partners like Adobe and work with uh, teams of really talented, enthusiastic students and professors. And a bit about our office. Uh, if you ha haven't uh, really worked with us a lot, uh, this is the uh, folks in our office. Uh, we've got uh, Christina, my boss, myself, Julie Sylvester, who runs our uh, operation in Pembroke, Kevin Holmes, who runs our social innovation lab, uh, Teo Merchev, who runs our data lab, and uh, Pablo and Mauricio, who run our construction research lab. So, uh, you know what, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'll give you the URL to this thing. Uh, I'll give it to you at the end. I can't get to my browser window right now. <laughs> uh, applied research projects are win-win-wins. Uh, students win because they get some hands-on experience on a real, uh, real world project with real world industry partner clients. Uh, our partners get a win because uh, they're getting a great team working on a project of interest to themselves with uh, highly subsidized R&D funding. And professors win because it gets them uh, in touch with their uh, industry, people uh, in the working world, and they stay up to date on the latest trends in technology. So it's a, it's a triple win. Uh, the objective for this project was to create a series of workshops to coach students on how to build beautiful digital portfolios of their academic accomplishments and work experiences. Uh, and we had several challenges that we addressed from the outset. Uh, one was, uh, and I'm talking about students outside of the School of Media and Design, uh, but the value of having a visual professional portfolio was not really well understood by students that were in um, many of our high runner programs like business and computer programming and uh, culinary arts and uh, really anything outside the School of Media and Design. Uh, the idea of putting together a visual portfolio is not well understood or appreciated, uh, unlike students in graphic design or photography who know that uh, having a 
a great portfolio is, uh, is table stakes for their industries. Uh, so like I'm saying, uh, for most non-design students, the awareness uh, and their level of skills to use Adobe tools was very low. I, I think a lot of you guys are familiar with Adobe Creative Cloud and you know that it's quite a large set of complex tools like Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere. Uh, and those are well understood by students in design programs. However, outside of design programs in computer programming or mechanical engineering or business, uh, the awareness and level of knowledge necessary to use those tools is we found pretty low. So that's an issue. Uh, and really it showed up because at the outset of this project, there was fewer than 5,000 students who had activated their Creative Cloud licenses. Uh, as you folks probably know, uh, the college has uh, pre-purchased the uh, potential for every student and every faculty member and staff member to have a Creative Cloud license. So that's you know north of 20,000 just counting students. Uh, but at the start of uh, at the end of last year, there was less than 5,000 that were being used. So so that's an issue. We're really underutilizing that that uh, that resource. So uh, we set out to create nine workshops to try and uh, get more students knowledgeable of how to use these tools and really how to put together a uh, beautiful, visually compelling portfolio of their talents and experiences. And so those are the nine areas that we developed uh, uh, portfolios for. I'm gonna show you a couple examples and here's where I'm gonna run into problems with this thing here. I'm going to uh, bring up, uh, Are you guys seeing anything on my screen at all right now? Yep, we can see your screen, John. We okay. can see you toggling around. Okay, I'm going to switch the screen over here to uh, one of the portfolios. This is kind of awkward. Uh, let me just try this. John, I shared your Spark page with everybody. Oh, thank you. Yep. Appreciate that. No problem. Okay, so here's an example portfolio. Um, are you guys seeing that for Miranda yes. Williams? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is a, a student uh, who was graduating from the sports business program. And uh, we uh, developed some prototype portfolios as part of the exercise. So this is an example of how they look. Uh, she's a, a sports business grad. We had them to create just a quick video. So try playing that. My name is Miranda Williams and I am a graduate of the Sport Business Management Graduate Program at Algonquin College. I enjoy sport business as it combines my passion for sport and gives me the opportunity to work within the business department as well as be a part of the preparation of events as sport organizations. I hope to use my knowledge and skill from my previous employment and schooling to further help succeed in the sport industry. I am well organized, reliable, and dedicated to my work and will always give 110%. I am also a problem solver and will work towards finding a solution when a problem arises. Please take a look at my portfolio to further see what I can bring to you and your organization. So that's an example of uh, one of the quick videos we had them do. Um, the portfolio goes on to list out their work experience. Uh, there's more details on their particular jobs. Uh, there's visual evidence of their uh, diploma, uh, listing of their education and certificates, uh, testimonials, which are always nice. Here's one from somebody she worked for in Gymnastics Canada. Miranda continues to prove herself as, as a valuable addition to the Gym Can organization. Her dependable work ethic and commitment to excellence allowed many previously stalled projects to move forward, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> she's got a lot of soft skills, which she lists here, communication, time management, et cetera. And she's got a lot of personal interests that are pretty sporty, hockey, soccer, camping, fishing. And then uh, finally, uh, uh, contact information as well as uh, URLs to her LinkedIn and a full resume. And so that's a quick example of uh, how one of these digital portfolios look. Uh, I'll quickly show you one more. Uh, this is Aman Sharma. He's a graduate from the project management program 
and also has a mechanical engineering degree. Uh, he's an aspiring project manager. Uh, his experience, he's worked as an intern at a thermal power plant uh, at a vehicle company called Iker Polaris. He's very proficient in the use of software tools. He's got a few projects here, thermal analysis of air conditioning. He built, uh, oh, he, he raced in the National Kart Racing Championship in his hometown. A uh, list of his education, his uh, project management certificate and his Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering. He uh, plays the bagpipes <laughs> and he's a semi-professional male model. Uh, he's, he does uh, volunteer work uh, for the uh, Drop of Good Hope organization. Uh, and he's got a contact page with his number and email and LinkedIn. So that's a quick, uh, quick look at uh, how some of these portfolios look. I'm going to stop sharing here and move back to my, uh, my other page. Hey, John, can I ask a question? Sure. It's Jason here. Hey, Jason. Hi. I'm wondering if you've received feedback or if the student, the student graduates themselves received feedback when working with your career center and, and along their readiness in these artifacts. Uh, I've received feedback directly uh, from the co-op group, for example, and they were very, very uh, enthusiastic and uh, want more of their students to uh, generate these portfolios. So from the admin side, the uh, response and feedback has been very positive. Same thing with the, uh, we call them student employment services. Uh, we reviewed these with uh, the manager in that group and the director, and they were uh, very enthusiastic and uh, uh, wanted us to uh, um, generate programs, uh, our portfolio pro workshops for other programs, which, which we did. Nice. OK, thanks. Yep. OK, uh, so I'm going to move along. Can you see uh, my page here? Did I remember to share it? Yeah, I think I did. Should say here are some digital portfolio examples, which we just looked at. Yep. Uh, so uh, in terms of the story of this, uh, this project, uh, for me, this started over a year ago, back in May 2019. And there is a uh, Advancing Learning Educational Technology Conference at La Cité. I'm sure, uh, Josh, you're familiar with these, these conferences. And uh, so I attended that. And uh, that's where I was at a session where I met Jason Katzoff, who just spoke up, who's on the line. Uh, I'll introduce him shortly. Uh, and Mark Caruso, who is our Adobe uh, sales rep for the college. And they did a presentation on uh, Creative Cloud and Spark. There's, uh, there's Jason up here. Uh, this is probably the right point to introduce Jason. Jason's our uh, educational support rep from Adobe, and he's been uh, at our side throughout this project, giving us uh, feedback, uh, helping us to actually put together the project proposal and uh, helping us get approval from his, uh, his management at Adobe to help uh, come up with the industry partner funding for this, uh, for this program. So we're really appreciative of having uh, Jason on board. And uh, Jason, did you want to say a few words of uh, self-introduction? Uh, just hello, everybody. I, John, I appreciate you uh, convening a meeting here uh, to go over your, your findings and, and your successes. And these are exactly the types of initiatives that I thrill to work on that, and that Adobe likes to get behind. So I work, aside from Algonquin College, I work with 12 other schools as a customer success manager, just helping uh, all facets of your, your institution find greater value, greater success through the use of Adobe products. So happy to be here. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Jason. So I'm gonna put my screen back on here. <clears throat> okay, so uh, do you guys have Jason's face back on there? Yes. I'll take that as a yes. Okay, and I'm moving along here. Uh, so yeah, Jason and I started working together uh, last summer to put to, to uh, develop a project proposal, uh, so we could uh, pitch it to OCE and get them to uh, fund the balance of the project to allow us to go out and hire uh, hire students. So uh, 
I guess one of the development stages was uh, Jason invited me to attend their Adobe Max conference last year, uh, and where we continued to develop the proposal. I got to meet a whole bunch of uh, really interesting, enthusiastic Adobe educational people and got some feedback and uh, got to attend uh, Adobe Max live in LA last year. It was very cool, uh, very uh, huge experience. I think like 16,000 people or something all uh, in the LA Convention Center. Very cool workshops. Uh, Billie Eilish was there to show her latest video and it was uh, definitely quite a inspirational uh, moment, kind of reignited my own personal passion for, uh, for digital media. So that was great. And uh, kept working on the project proposal and it got approved. So that was great, which allowed me to bring Pat on board to the team. And we proceeded to uh, interview students to hire them to put the team together, which we did. So we hired initially five students from media and design. We've got, uh, if I do this, we've got Adam here. Uh, from uh, advertising, Camila from journalism, John Viev from graphic design, uh, Sarah from human uh, centered design, and Victoria from photography. So they were our great first set of students on the team. And they uh, worked to develop four of the four first uh, portfolio workshops mechanical engineering, business administration, culinary arts, and skilled trades. Uh, we developed these portfolios using a rapid ideation and prototyping approach called a design sprint, which was uh, based on this book written by Jake Knapp at Google Ventures. And it's a process, it's a quite a unique process. Uh, it's an intensive five-day process uh, to do ideation, prototyping, and testing. And it's meant to kind of converge on the key project objectives and deliverables uh, by uh, getting a whole uh, multidisciplinary team of participants and uh, put it together in a very intense time box five day process. And this is what we used initially uh, in the lab in the DARE district uh, back in uh, the February, March timeframe. And uh, I'm just gonna play this quick video, 90 second video to explain how this process worked because I think it was one of the keys to why the project worked out well. So here's a, uh, I'm try and play it and see what happens here. Let me know if uh, there's a problem getting it playing. You guys see the, uh, the YouTube page there? Yep. Okay. Hi, I'm Jake from GV, and this is a super fast intro to our sprint process. The big idea with the sprint is to build and test a prototype in just five days. It's kind of like fast forwarding into the future so you can see how customers react before you go to all the time and expense of building a real product. Every sprint starts with a big challenge, a team of about seven people, and a clear calendar. On Monday, you'll create a map of the problem and choose one specific target. On Tuesday, you'll create solutions to your problem. But instead of a shout out loud group brainstorm, you'll work alone to sketch detailed competing solutions. On Wednesday, you'll pick the best solutions. Instead of endless debate, you'll use a structured decision-making process. On Thursday, you'll build one, two, or even three realistic prototypes. These prototypes are just a facade of a finished product. You can use tools like Keynote, Marvel, and Envision to create fake apps and websites, or to quickly prototype hardware, you can use a 3D printer or modify an existing product, or just prototype the marketing materials. Finally, on Friday, you'll test your prototypes in five one-on-one -on -one customer interviews. You'll find obvious patterns. Some solutions will work, but some won't. Either way, you'll have clarity about what to do next and a great start on that big challenge. To learn more, check out our book, Sprint. It's got detailed hour-by-hour -hour instructions and it's packed with stories about startups like Slack and Medium and Flatiron Health. Good luck with your Sprint and thanks for watching. <clears throat> so that's the, uh, that's the design Sprint. And uh, oops, oh boy, <clears throat> I, I think I've bounced myself back to the first page again. Sorry about that, guys. Just please bear with me. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay, so uh, uh, this is the uh, process that I've used not only on this project, but uh, quite a few applied research projects previous to this. And uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it can be used really for anything from doing a prototype to a product to even a process. So uh, uh, the links are all in the presentation. So uh, if you have a chance, I'd highly recommend looking, looking at this and uh, I hope to use it in future projects as well. Uh, so uh, we were uh, back in March, uh, we were delivering these workshops uh, quite successfully in the, uh, up in the library in the Student Learning Center in their, uh, in their digital literacy lab workshop there. And of course, uh, mid-March came along and you guys all know what happened, the coronavirus struck. So we had to shut that down and we had to pivot really quickly and convert the workshops to online over Zoom. And I'm happy to report that uh, it worked. Uh, we were able to finish off all our workshops in April over Zoom. So that was a, a quick turnaround and uh, um, I guess a uh, uh, surprisingly successful transition in a short amount of time. So I was quite happy that we were able to do that. Uh, so here's another thing that happened. Uh, the original end date for the project was, was April, but uh, due to the coronavirus, uh, our funding agency extended uh, the time frame to over the summer. So uh, we had to go ahead to keep going. So, uh, so we uh, regrouped the team for phase two. Some of the students had graduated. So Pat and I did some more interviews and hired three more candidates. And we brought in uh, Kim Miradin from uh, Human Centered Design, uh, Christine from Graphic Design and Shrija from Project Management. So we were able to rebuild the team and we built five more portfolios. So uh, we built one for business accounting, computer programming, project management, sports business, and one on how to make a pitch video. So all these uh, workshops have been captured in online video playbook form format, uh, really patterned after uh, LinkedIn learning type video uh, instructional workshops. And so they're now all available on the Algonquin College website. Uh, I'll just, just uh, the URL is there in the package. I'll just quickly zip to it. And there you can see all nine workshops are there. And you can see, for example, you go into any of these. Uh, is that all coming through still, Pat? Yeah, we can see it, John. Okay. And here, for example, is uh, Victoria, our photography student who did the sports business workshop. Hi, and welcome. My name is Tori Thompson. I'm a photography graduate from Algonquin College and your resource on how to build a digital portfolio. In this video, I'll be going over how to build a digital portfolio for a marketing management and sport business management student. And uh, so after her uh, talking head video, she does uh, screen captures to explain exactly how to use the tool. So here's a, an actual instructional segment. In this video, we will be adding an introduction section to your Spark page. We will begin the process of creating the contents, which we will finish in a later video, we will learn how to add in a published video, and we will add in a short quote. This will give us a chance to look at the layout options available and learn how to use So I think you get the idea. So uh, if you want to see a step-by-step -step, uh, explanation of how to build any of these portfolios with content uh, taken from those programs, uh, they're up, all up there on the, uh, the library website. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation here. And of course, it bounced me back. Uh, sorry, guys. We're going to just have to zip through this again. <clears throat> OK, uh, pay no attention to the next few frames. <laughs> OK, so here we go. Um, and we're winding down here. So uh, just sort of a retrospective, some of the outcomes from the project. Uh, we developed these nine workshops. We ran over 25 sessions, both in class and online, to coach these non-design students how to develop portfolios and improve their digital literacy skills. 
Uh, we did a knowledge transfer to uh, folks in the library and student employment services uh, teams, and they're now able to carry on delivering these workshops. Uh, I'm happy to say that we increased the awareness of a number of the college's students and faculty who can benefit from the campus-wide Adobe Creative Cloud license. As I said at the outset, there were less than 5,000 licenses activated. And uh, when I last checked a few weeks ago, we're over 10,000 license activations, which, which I think is pretty cool because uh, that's you know uh, approximately half the student body, which is quite a good chunk compared to how it was when we started this uh, last year. Uh, some of the takeaways from the project, uh, especially the online part that we did in the summertime. Uh, how was the online working experience? It, of course, it was challenging, uh, but overall, I was pleasantly surprised at how well it went. Uh, we used a lot of uh, digital tools, uh, primarily, of course, uh, Spark was our main uh, tool of uh, instruction, uh, but of course, we used a lot of Zoom. And the other tool that we used quite heavily was Miro. It's a uh, online uh, ideation whiteboard collaboration tool, and that was uh, very key to our ability to pivot from running our workshops in a face-to-face -face lab setting to uh, an online virtual setting. And I have to say it's got some advantages uh, doing it online over the, uh, the manual version. As you guys know from doing uh, brainstorming workshops and so forth, you've got tons of posters and yellow stickies and whiteboards that uh, when you want to archive what happened at the end, somebody's running around the lab with, a, with an iPhone taking pictures of the, uh, the posters and you get a lot of stickies falling on the floor. Uh, with uh, the digital form in Miro, you can simply save the session. So it's a nice, easy way to get a digital artifact of your, of your brainstorming session. So I'd say that was a learning from the project. Uh, uh, the biggest learning, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was really fun. It was really energizing to be breaking new ground. Uh, everybody was working online, trying to do things uh, collaboratively, remotely for the first time. And it was, it was great to basically figure out from the ground up how to do this online and to make it work using these uh, collaboration tools. So, uh, so that was great that we're able to uh, learn how to do that. Uh, the most challenging aspect of the project when we were running the workshops, of course, uh, trying to achieve high levels of engagement with our students. And of course, you get tons of problems with people not getting the, the tool loaded properly or not getting access to the exercise files. And there's, you know, tons and tons of pain points in getting things going. Uh, so of course, that's uh, always a big challenge and our project was no different. Uh, most surprising thing that came up again, I guess I said this before, but these design sprints that we did to develop the workshops worked amazingly well with everybody working remotely over Zoom and Miro. It was a real pleasant surprise. Uh, other takeaways, uh, I think as an applied research project manager, you know, to me, the, the thing that uh, uh, leads to great success is to hire a great team. And we had a great team to, to be able to hire the best, most talented and diverse set of people uh, that we could find, uh, I think was really a huge factor at making the project work. Uh, the design sprints, as I said earlier, they're a great way to, to launch a project with clear objectives, understanding user needs, and getting the team to gel because it's a highly interactive collaborative process. Uh, Adobe Spark itself, uh, it was a, a big takeaway. It's a great entry level tool for anybody taking their first step into Creative Cloud. You know, Adobe tools can be quite uh, intimidating because uh, the, uh, the high runner mainstream tools are very complex. Uh, but uh, as one of our uh, human factors students mentioned uh, after getting to know it, she said that uh, Adobe Spark is very limited, a very limited tool, but in a good way. And I think that really describes uh, one of the values of Adobe Spark. And the final takeaway, on online collaboration and learning can be the best of times and the worst of times. I think you, uh, you guys have heard, you know, death by, uh, death by PowerPoint, right? Death by a thousand bullets. Well, 
it's uh, it's even worse. It can be even worse online if some guy's just reading through a bunch of PowerPoints. Uh, but uh, if you get into a situation where it's interactive, um, people are doing things uh, online uh, while you're uh, delivering material, uh, it can be very, very stimulating. And especially when they, uh, you can tell when they when they get it and their eyes light up and they, they're, uh, they're very happy about the, what they've been able to accomplish online. So uh, those can be the best of times. Uh, I have to say thanks to our friends in the library and student employment services. We work with Annabella, Arkea, uh, Christine Santini, David Edelbaum, uh, Jessica Andrews in employment services and Tammy Thornton who manages the library. Uh, thank you to our friends at Adobe, Jason and company. Thank you very much. We couldn't have done it without you. Uh, great support, encouragement, and cool Adobe swag. I'll show you my swag later. Uh, of course, I have to say thanks to OCE. Uh, we couldn't do this without their funding. And my last thoughts, uh, it's been a really great experience. Uh, it was a pleasure working with uh, a dream team of uh, creative students. Uh, it was a real privilege to get to know all the students in the programs that were our clients, you know, in computer programming and uh, business and engineering and uh, culinary trades. Uh, we, in the process of doing a design sprint and really talking to these students who are our clients, we got to know them really well. And I, I came away knowing our students a lot better um, and uh, with a heightened imagination for their ingenuity and their desire to succeed. And uh, that was great. And I think as an administrator, I think uh, by doing these exercises uh, to get to know our students better, we, uh, I think we all benefit. We understand them a lot more, understand uh, what they come to the table with and where they wanna go. So I think uh, my hope is that uh, the college will continue doing these workshops and I think it'll be a very healthy um, activity uh, both ways for uh, us to know our students better and for our students to uh, um, be able to project to the industry what their skills are. And uh, with that, the, the last word is a, a little plug for Patrick's session tomorrow. Patrick Charlton will be uh, doing a hands-on workshop tomorrow to actually show uh, any uh, <clears throat> any faculty or staff how to use Adobe Spark. And I think the uh, learning exercise will be to uh, take a uh, typical lesson plan and then turn it into uh, an Adobe Spark lesson plan. So uh, that should be uh, that should be pretty cool. So uh, that's in your Kaleidoscope agendas. And with that, I will uh, stop sharing my screen and come back to uh, the meeting. So uh, I um, guess thanks I for the plug. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Good, you better. You're helping me. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to mention a couple of couple. Hi, everybody. My name is Patrick. Um, as John introduced me in the in the uh, the session, I'm at uh, 10 years with the college part time. Um, and with the School of Business. And I just wanted to, to mention, it's been a pleasure to be part of uh, an applied research project um, and be the faculty, one of the faculty members uh, that was part of the team. Um, and um, I'm really excited to, to again, um, conduct the workshop tomorrow from a, a faculty perspective and how Spark, Adobe Spark, um, how I used Adobe Spark in my lessons and um, tomorrow we will be specifically going over an assignment outline and how to uh, add a spark uh, to your assignment your assignment outlines that you may if you're if you're a faculty member you may or may not be um, um, be, um, be asked about a routine routinely from your students to clarify or um, um, to, to try to to try to try to understand them. So, so the thought process is how do I create a Spark page um, based on one of the assignment deliverables I'm giving my students um, so that it's a bit more uh, visual and easy to, to digest. So that will be kind of the essence of tomorrow's session.
Great. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, I just for those uh, who arrived a little later, um, I am uh, Christina and I am the ambassador from the Kaleidoscope Committee. Um, just wanted to let you know that we have uh, a few minutes remaining and John, Patrick and Jason um, have um, suggested that if you have any questions, you can either raise your hand and or unmute your mic and, and just go ahead and ask the questions. Or if you prefer, you can type them into our chat window. And before we wrap things up, I'm also going to share a link to our um, wall of our uh, virtual wall of appreciation, which is um, uh, part of our kaleidoscope um, conference um, history, uh, where you can um, say thank you or recognize a colleague, uh, recognize the department, the community, uh, and just uh, let us know what you think uh, about the conference and how things are going. And on a personal note, I think it's actually really incredible what you showed us, John, and I wish I had that when I was starting out as a graduate. So if anything, just to let people know how to pronounce my name, <laughs> you know, it would have been such a a lifesaver um, to be able to um, say how to pronounce my name and and just introduce myself uh, because I'm sure that many people who who may have looked at my name on a resume printed on the nicest possible paper that I could find it still would say, uh, yeah, I'm not going to touch that, <laughs> right? So. Uh, just for uh, fear of uh, trying to put together a name that has, yeah, that many whys. <laughs> anyway, great presentation. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Patrick and Jason. Very nice to meet you. And I'm posting that link right now and I will let you um, ask questions. Thanks, Christina. And uh, yeah, if, if uh, you were to do a portfolio, we'd ask you to do a 90 second uh, pitch video where you could actually pronounce your name and everybody would just know. I even have a picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have mentioned that the pitch video uh, was produced uh, using uh, Adobe Premiere Rush, which is a very easy to use. Uh, Absolutely video brilliant. Yeah. Really brilliant. Very, very cool. And I've, I was playing with uh, Adobe Rush over the summer because I was teaching some classes and we were still doing the project and learning about all the, the tools with Adobe. And um, it was very helpful with, again, clarifying instructions um, over the class. We had just trans transferred everything to remote in the spring. So students were still trying to get used to the environment. So I found it very helpful to, to kind of... Um, send them a video or post a video actually within my Spark page um, so that they, they, they were able to uh, view it uh, uh, at their leisure. And, um, and it helped with <coughs> clarifying things. Yep. I see uh, Saif Tarai has his hand up. Saif is a professor in computer programming. Do you have a question, Saif? Yes, John, you know, thank you. And like, thank you very much for the presentation, Patrick, like Jason and Christina as well. Um, I have a question about the, uh, like about the licensing agreement between between Adobe and Algonquin. Uh, like in terms of, you know, long-term commitment, like if we, if we develop content in Spark or any other Adobe tool, and let's say three years, two years down the line, you know, the license agreement changes in some way, uh, then what happens to the content? And my second question was, sorry, sorry, like I'll stop now and I'll, I'll wait for your answer. Okay, well, I'll take a first cut. I'm sure Jason can give you a better answer, but uh, the nice news is that uh, Spark, any Spark pages we develop are, are there and uh, they'll continue to be there. In terms of uh, editing access, uh, I think right now we've got uh, a special deal with uh, Adobe that, uh, uh, we can continue to have access uh, for now temporarily for free and I think at a very low cost going forward. Uh, Jason, do you have the latest update on how that works? Sure, sure. And thanks for your question, Saif. Um, these agreements are three-year agreements. They're called term licensing agreements. But like John said, anything created in Spark, it's a dedicated uh, URL 
that is is uh, perpetual, you know, barring any worldwide disaster. And I know we've seen enough of those lately. Uh, it, it, these are permanent. So the other benefit that we recently introduced from Adobe is a uh, like a graduation migration. So imagine students develop a you know a, a great bit of content showcasing their academic journey. They want to take that content with them to the next phase, whether it be employment or entrepreneurship or what have you. So it's a one button migration that as a student, it, whether they're graduating or they're just separating from your institution, they can embark on that. And it copies all their content to a personal Adobe account. That's a free account. They can choose to buy their own license and become you know, a designer or what have you using the tools. But that content is still migrated for them to keep. And just one last note there, the, the current agreement uh, allows for all faculty and staff, and I think like John said, 19,000 students uh, to get full access to Adobe Creative Cloud, which is all of the applications and all of the services that connect those apps together. Thank you. What's your second question, Saif? Uh, you know, my second question was, we have, uh, you know, like I hope I'm not keeping you uh, from uh, uh, you know the like we have we have other platforms such as H5P, which Algonquin is now exploring for uh, online content development and so on. So, is there any compatibility with Adobe products and H5P? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. That's a bright space question, uh, Christina uh, or anybody in the LTS. Have any? Uh, I don't know what uh, L5 uh, H5P, yeah. Yeah, H, yeah. I'm afraid I can't uh, speak to that. Um, and we have um, we have um, lost Josh, but I will definitely look into it, Saif, and uh, and uh, I can email you um, the answer if, um, if when I find out. Um, yes. Hopefully um, tomorrow. Uh, but personally, I, I haven't been involved with that um, that side of Brightspace um, um, applications for for some time now. So I I'm sorry I can't answer okay. your question because right. because there are quite a few tools available now, and then actually mm -hmm. the actually the paradox is that to choose the right one so that we can continue on for a long time, and uh, mm -hmm. and that is that is a dilemma actually. You know, I mean. Yeah. yeah. So, Sorry. Jason, do you know if there's any uh, integration with uh, um, Brightspace? It's uh, D2L, Desire to Learn, is the LMS vendor. Are there any plugins or anything that Adobe has for that brand of LMS? We've worked out and just released a, a Blackboard LTI plugin, and months ago we released a Canvas plugin, so it can connect to the Adobe apps from there. That makes it easier for students and faculty. Yeah. H5P, I know, is a newer technology, and I know Seneca College has uh, had some uh, learning and, uh, sessions internally. I, what I can say is, you know, Adobe products can be used to create any visual media. So if H5, H5P allows for JPEG images, MP4 <clears throat> videos, uh, that sort of thing, then Adobe can be your content engine. And that can feed into H5P, but I'd certainly follow up with you offline. You know, if you want to provide your email address, and I can connect you to some resources that I discover. And that's a good point about uh, Seneca, Jason. Uh, you know, they're they like us are are on Brightspace. Uh, so uh, maybe our friend uh, is it Jennifer down there? And Peters, that's right. Yeah, she that's might it. have some insight into how they're able to uh, interwork uh, creative for their Brightspace environment. Yeah, it's a great it's a great point, Saif. I I hear your pain uh, as a as a professor, you know, getting inundated with all these different tools. Which ones do I kind of lean into? And um, I kind of have a, a, I mean, my own opinion. I think we all do. Um, but one of the the big uh, criteria is ease of use um, for me to learn because uh, I've got to get my head wrapped around it to deploy it. Um, you know, is it going to be around long? Um, and is it easy to distribute? So uh, what I can, I can attest to with Spark is it hits all those three as far as um, I, don't, I don't foresee Adobe going away. It's, it's very invested into with regards to our, media, our school media design. They use it heavily. Um, so that's checkbox one. 
Number two, the ease of distribution. The fact that I could just distribute a link uh, to my page to students and better yet, I can update after I've sent my link. So the students have a link of my page, perhaps of a lesson or an outline, and uh, oh, I forget to maybe add a few steps. I can just go into that existing page, edit, refresh, and I don't have to send another link out. It automatically updates the link that I have, that I have uh, already distributed. Um, and it, if you have a chance, take a look at John's page on your, on your phone. Uh, there's some, it, it, it transfers great, uh, really nicely to mobile, uh, any kind of, um, any, any screen size. So just from a, the perspective of distribution, ease of use, and even, even just um, ideation or mapping out my concepts before I enter into a, a remote lesson, um, I just find it, it's really, it's extremely visual. So it's appealing to, for when I'm planning a lesson. And then again, just to, um, to deploy. So. Thanks, Patrick. I should mention too that I think Adobe's come out with a number of uh, low cost licenses. I think for Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, but for 10 bucks, I think you can get a, a Photoshop only license. Uh, and every Adobe license uh, also includes a free Spark license. So it can be very cost effective even for a student to continue to have uh, editing capability for a Spark portfolio. Yeah, after they separate from your institution, but know that the, the right. agreement with Algonquin College is for everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it looks like that's it for questions. So and, uh, we're uh, at the top of the hour. So uh, thanks everybody for coming. And uh, I think we have one uh, more, John. You're not oh, off the we? hook yet. Well, Hab, did you have a question? Yes, I do. And, and sorry oh. for uh, joining you late, but I am glad that I can't you. I mean, so, um, yeah, I do have a question. Maybe you already touched it. Uh, I, I saw in the, um, in the news that Adobe will stop supporting Flash as uh, Flash, mm -hmm. as, as uh, Google and uh, other uh, organization, they will create their own uh, tools. So is it that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, several years ago, we actually, we announced that, that Flash would be end of life. Uh, and I think it's effective the end of this calendar year. So between HTML5 and some other newer technologies, um, yeah, they, they uh, we, you know, we no longer sell or support Flash. That's, okay. Thank you. It was a very good tool, I mean, so. Yeah, uh, I, we'll blame Steve Jobs. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm sad to see Flash go too. I, that's, you know, when I first got into digital media, Flash was very popular at the time. And uh, I think it's still a great tool actually. Uh, but I guess uh, commercially and politically, it's, uh, it's no, no longer uh, in favor. So uh, I guess that's what happens out there in the world of high tech. It's good that there are a number of uh, complementary or, or replacement technologies available now. Yeah, I think After Effects allows you to do any of the uh, animations and types of motion graphics that we used to do in Flash. Yeah. The evolution of digital technology, right? <laughs> right? And John and I can attest to some pretty ancient stuff that we tried out some years ago, right? Right. as we mentioned earlier this um, before the session began. Anyway, so once again, thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, Patrick uh, kindly shared um, the link to um, John's Spark page, and um, it will be available in the recording that we will post uh, of the session uh, on in the um, <clears throat> employee learning catalog course shell that we um, we have, where you um, likely received a link to when you registered, and uh, please um, take a take a minute to um, post something on our wall of appreciation. And I hope you enjoyed the session and will um, catch up with Patrick, our other presenters tomorrow uh, morning. We have two sets of sessions uh, tomorrow morning, starting at 10 and 11.
And don't forget the uh, music trivia session to wrap up our conference at noon with uh, Rob Kershaw. Anyway, thank you so very much and uh, you guys. enjoy the rest of your day. You. Bye. You. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Thanks John, everybody. Jason, and Patrick very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.